Whoa, did you hear that? That was the sound of a cataclysmic shift in Disney and Marvel. That's right, friends. I don't know if you heard the news, but we're going to go over it. There's been a pretty big, maybe firing, layoff, walking away in the Marvel Universe. We're going to go through all of it and give you a little bit of perspective here as uh, this is some breaking news. And I, I think it shows a lot as to what is going on in the world and our general dissatisfaction with Marvel and some of the other things that have been going on. Let's take a look. In a shocker, and this was ex the exclusive from The Hollywood Reporter, Marvel Studio veteran Victoria Alonso exits. Now, many of you may not know this, who she is or, or what her name is, but we'll, we'll go with this news because this, this is pretty high profile. And then what that shows you for everything else that's going on. They're saying that the reasons are unclear, but she parted ways with Marvel on Friday. She has been with the company for at least 17 years watching it. And this is what she says. Watching the studio grow from operating above a Mercedes-Benz dealership in Beverly Hills to being acquired by Disney. She was just on the red carpet for Quantumania. So no less than two weeks ago, she was, she was there. And maybe Quantumania is a big part of what, what got pushed her over the edge. She joined the studio in 2006 as the chief visual effects and post-production uh, person. And she was a co-producer on Iron Man, Thor, Iron Man 2, Captain America, Avengers. So she's big time. And essentially, um, she's very outspoken, has a lot of opinions. And some people are saying that this is coming, you know, in the shadow of Ant-Man and the Wasp poor box office showing. She was uh, very outspoken with the fight with Disney, uh, with Florida, and she's always going to fight for representation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, she was she's big timer, and here she's she's leaving the studio. What do I think happened? Uh, I'm hearing from some sources behind the scenes that we've been talking about all these visual effects issues that have been going on with Marvel and. And how the studios themselves, the visual effects studios, have been coming back and saying that Marvel is one of the worst studios to work for. And some people are saying behind the scenes that she was a big cause of those problems. You know, obviously they had a huge amount of stuff on their plate and they were pushing these studios harder and harder. But if you said anything negatively about her or gave her, like she would blackball you, uh, they were saying that she wasn't very nice to work with. So this is all very interesting because on top of all of this, uh, so so the one key component that we should understand is that originally Kevin Feige had his hands in basically all of the movies up till Endgame. And then once Disney kind of got restructured a little bit and Disney Marvel got restructured, he kind of took an upper level management position and then she assumed his role as the day-to-day -day person who was handling all the movies where she was there on set making sure that things happened the way that they were supposed to so a lot of phase four clearly falls on her shoulders and you know with kevin feige stepping away and making some poor decisions maybe it's time for him to get back in the chair if, if he can correct this i mean some people are saying it's due to superhero fatigue he does not agree with you so this is the other part of this news a couple days ago all the confirmed Marvel TV shows on Disney Plus, re, re, they all lost their release windows. These, All these shows here all had releases, and now they, they don't. You know, we're hearing bad, bad rumors that Blade is in production hell, uh, that the star Mahashala Ali is not happy with it. That also includes Brie Larson, who's not happy with um, the Marvels. You know, she's Captain Marvel. All the other movies, Iron Man, Thor, Thor 2, Thor 3, Thor Love and Thunder, even Ant-Man got Ant-Man and the Wasp, even Ant-Man, but she did not get Captain Marvel 2. So that's kind of interesting, right? So now that all these shows don't have release titles and Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, is saying, no, 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 we're not doing this now, things are going to get a little more interesting. I suspect 
some of these shows will not get made. I think they're too far along in Daredevil to stop it. Secret Invasion's already in the bag. Loki Season 2's in the bag. You'll probably get the two of those this year. Um, but as far as things like Agatha, Coven of Chaos, not sure. Ironheart, really? Mm, Echo never should have been greenlit. Seems like a bad idea. Like a character no one knows and no one really cared about in a show that did really poorly. So D Disney and Marvel Studios, they're in big, 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 big trouble here. There's some some real big problems. They claim it's, oh, they put too much out. But I don't agree with that necessarily. I think if you, people will keep watching it if you put up good quality. And when the quality starts to decline, that's a real problem. And clearly there are things going on behind the scenes. If a 17-year veteran of your company who helped establish the company gets ousted. That seems like a pretty big deal to me. So now Disney Plus has them all as coming soon. I don't know if I agree with that. So, and this is this came out a couple of days ago. This actually came out before the the release or, you know, her walking away, Victoria Victoria Alonso. Uh, what they're saying is, oh, there's a big shakeup because there's complaints of rust CG, CGI, overworked visual effects off artists, tight deadlines, and you know that was hurting everything. Now clearly she wasn't in charge of the release schedule, but the one other interesting thing <clears throat> that I found kind of like this was interesting. Kevin Feige himself says, "I've been at Marvel for 22 years now, and most of us have been around for a decade or longer." That includes his right hand who just walked off the project. And they're like, how, how long is this going to last, this comic book thing? And he's saying, well, it's akin to asking, well, Gone with the Wind, how many movies are made off of novels? And he's saying that because they're based off of comic books, that they're not going to get fatigue. Ah, uh, you know, we're talking more about genres. The The comic book movie is, is more of a genre than just adapting novels novels come in all sorts of sh shapes and sizes doesn't really seem to matter so this whole thing is is looks chickens come home to roost man you start making garbage people are going to notice people are not going to be happy about it and you know where people pay they don't talk out loud a lot there's some of us here we all know you know we see it we know it we we complain about it but what really matters is the money. You can't be unprofitable. You can't keep putting out bombs. The only movie that really made a lot of movie in Phase Four or a lot of money in Phase Four was Doctor Strange, and that was supposed to break a billion and did not. So they really like I I've seen charts of how much money was made in the different phases, and Phase Four was not successful. Don't forget the Eternals, Shang Chi. All those are terrible movies that no one ever speaks of ever again. You know, where's Shang Chi too? Where's the Eternals too? They didn't make any money. They're not. They're, they, they better not make them because it's going to look real bad. What do you think? Do you think Marvel is earning this? Do you think the chickens have come home to roost? Are you ready to get some eggs from these chickens? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, we definitely appreciate you listening, catching your news and entertainment stuff here. Uh, love all y'all. Thank you for listening. But I. I'm on to the next one.